So fun fact, I just shot this whole video and then realized my microphone was not on. So the video had no sound. So I have to record it all over again, but it's fine. Hi everyone, it's Spirituality and I am here to talk to you all about Yeshua because I'm a Christian witch. It's kind of my thing. Um, <laughs> my boyfriend just texted me as I was filming this. Totally lost my focus. Thanks. Um, anyway, so <laughs> I'm here to talk about Yeshua. I'm a Christian witch. Yeshua is kind of my thing. Um, and the reason why I'm making a video about him is because in my last video, which was a Q&A, someone asked me to uh, talk about like Christian deity correspondences. And I figured that that was going to be way too much content to try and fit into a few seconds in a Q&A video. So I figured that I would make it into a little mini series here on my channel, starting with Yeshua. So we're going to start with why I like working with Yeshua and then some things that you could potentially associate with him. So I personally like working with Yeshua because even though, you know, I and every other witch will say that there is no such thing as a beginner deity. And that is true to a certain extent. However, if you were raised Christian, you probably know a thing or two about Yeshua. It also depends on what kind of Christianity that you were raised in because there are some denominations that believe that like, you can talk to Jesus and he will talk back and encourage you to kind of sit down and meditate and reflect and listen for the voice of Jesus. That's the kind of denomination that I grew up in. Um, so for me, beginning to work with him and having you know a more in-depth relationship with him was easy. It might not be so easy for everyone else, again, depending on what kind of the denomination you grew up in. So even though there's no such thing as a good beginner deity, if there was one, he'd be pretty close, especially, like I said, um, if you were raised in Christianity, you already know the basics about Yeshua. I would recommend reading the Nag Hammadi Library and Gnostic texts that kind of tell you um, different things about Yeshua that you might not have learned in church. And um, there's a book called Jesus Through Pagan Eyes, and there's a book called The Occult Christ, basically analyzing Jesus through an occult perspective, um, just to give you different viewpoints of how he is viewed in different belief systems. That's something that I would recommend before deep diving into work with him. But other than that, he is a pretty good beginner deity, quote unquote. Another reason why I enjoy working with him is because he has had the human experience. Working with your other deities is amazing. I work with pagan deities and I'm having a great time, but the thing is, is they're not human, or at least the majority of them have not been human. Um, so it's kind of hard for them to understand the human experience, human weaknesses, human emotions, whereas Yeshua has had all of those things. Um, if you read the main gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you see that Jesus experienced anxiety. He experienced depression, sadness, grief, physical pain, obviously. Um, but he also experienced great happiness and great joy. He went to weddings. He drank wine with his buddies. Like he had the human experience. And so he has an understanding of that kind of thing. Um, and so, you know, when you have like practical human problems, um, he's more likely to have a kind of understanding of that. So for correspondences, I'm going to talk about colors, um, herbs, oils, slash scents, um, and crystals, just to give you a very basic baseline, um, what you can use as a way of worshiping him, as an offering, what's associated with him, etc. And some of this is a little spotty just because like, if you search, if you put crystals and Jesus in the same Google search, you're going to get, you know, all these Christian websites that are like, this is the devil. So <laughs> bear with me. Um, I did do some research, but this is also um, kind of UPG ish. Um, you'll see what I mean. So colors, 
purple, red, and gold. Why? Well, you know, I really, you could probably use any color, um, depending on, you know, your belief system and whatever, but purple is a color that is often used, especially in like Renaissance paintings of Jesus. You'll see him in like a white robe with a purple sash. And that is because in the Bible, he is taught as being the son of God. Now, I do believe that he is the son of Yahweh, and I will be making a video about Yahweh eventually. Um, I do believe that he is the son of Yahweh. Um, I just don't believe that Yahweh is the only God that exists. Hence me being, uh, I guess Christo-pagan is the word. Um, but I do believe that he was the son of Yahweh. And again, depending on your belief system, you know, whatever, in mainstream Christianity, at least, Jesus is seen as something of royalty and purple is the color of royalty and is often associated with him. Red is associated with him because of his crucifixion. In Christianity, blood is very symbolic. If you want to take a witchcraft approach, you could see that as being a form of blood magic. Now, everyone who is a Christian witch or has opinions on Jesus through an occult perspective is going to have different viewpoints on the significance of the crucifixion. I personally do not believe that he was crucified to save the world, but I do believe that his death was symbolic and that he wanted it to be symbolic because he was trying to save us from human religion and the members of the religious elite at his time killed him. And that's very symbolic. It very much got his message across. Um, I do believe that he resurrected as a representation of the kind of power that he had and that we all can have as well. Um, and that, you know, he really wanted to send a message and that he did that in the most powerful way that he could. And that, you know, maybe he was doing some kind of like spirit realm work in the three days that he was dead. I made a TikTok about this, but let me know if you'd like me to specify more. Red because of the crucifixion, blood. I don't necessarily believe like, oh, the blood washes all of our sins clean. And now that I'm not in mainstream Christianity anymore, that visual is so weird. <laughs> um, but like I said, I do believe that the crucifixion was very significant. So red. And finally, gold or yellow, um, just because those colors are typically associated with divinity or with light. Um, in Christian witchcraft, Jesus is seen as like the ultimate light worker. Um, so, or you could use white too to represent light, just things that represent light or divinity or things of that nature. Next, so these could be used as herbs, oils, scents, however you want to do it. Um, but basically, the top three that I associate with Jesus, and I bet you can probably guess them, frankincense, myrrh, and mustard seeds. Now, if you don't know the story, I'm sure you've heard the, I brought you frankincense, and I brought you myrrh, myrrh, dear. Like, that's what, <laughs> um, when Yeshua was born, these three wise men um, brought frankincense, myrrh, and gold as gifts. If you have access to gold, you can use gold as an offering too, but not everyone has that. Um, but those were gifts that were brought to the family when baby Jesus was born. So that's why frankincense and myrrh are so heavily associated with a lot of uh, biblical figures. Mustard seed, uh, is because he Jesus used it in an example in one of his preachings, talking about how even just having a little bit of faith can make amazing things happen. And it, he said something along the lines of faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. So a lot of times when I make deity candles for Yeshua, I include mustard seeds. Now I know frankincense and myrrh there's the herbs, but you could also get them as resins or as oils or as incense. 
I'm not sure if you can find mustard seed, like incense or oils, maybe you can. I personally have not been able to find it, but maybe it's a thing. Um, but you can find actual mustard seeds. Um, I don't know if you'll always be able to find them at a metaphysical shop. I personally was, um, but you may be able to get them online and other places too. So frankincense, myrrh, and mustard seed. Finally, crystals. Um, this is one that's gonna be kind of UPG-ish, uh, and it's really gonna be up to your preference because you know I tried to do some proper research on this, and again, if you search up crystals and Jesus in the same search bar, you're not gonna get great info. <laughs> so I chose these crystals based off of their associations and things that are associated with Yeshua and they just seem like they work. Um, so, for example, well, clear quartz for one thing. Clear quartz can be used for anything. But, besides clear quartz, angelite, because angels, angelic, um, yeah. Archangel Gabriel uh, came to Mother Mary to tell her that she was going to be pregnant with Yeshua. I'm sure angels were involved in other parts of the New Testament as well. I'm just blanking on where, but angelite because angels. Uh, amethyst because it's purple, which is one of his colors, but also because amethyst is so heavily associated with love and peace, which is what Yeshua was all about. That was what his entire message was. Love one another, yet peace with one another. That was kind of his whole shtick. And because Amethyst so heavily brings forth those things, um, I very much associate Amethyst with Yeshua. And finally, Bloodstone, because blood, that kind of symbolism is all over the Bible, it's all over Christianity. And again, even if you don't necessarily believe in that kind of symbolism or think that it's weird, um, Yeshua was crucified and wanted his death on the cross to be symbolic, to be meaningful. And so bloodstone can represent that. Um, but yeah, that's my very basic baseline um, correspondences for Yeshua. But if you have any others, obviously let us know in the comments. Um, don't forget to check me out on TikTok and my other social medias, which I will put in the description below. And I will see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in.